welcome to Beacons of Balance. Here we are today again to continue on with the topic of animal communication. Next to me is Linda. I'm Arlene. And this is wonderful Charlie. So Linda's going to give you a little intro and bio on Charlie. Charlie Gale is an animal communicator, energy healer, healer, and podcast host in San Francisco. After spending three decades hosting top-rated morning shows on the radio across the country, she was pulled into the healing path for both animals and people. Starting with Reiki, she continued adding holistic healing modalities to her toolbox until she realized that anim animal communication was a cornerstone of it all. Even though she has been talking to animals and playing with energy her whole life, she needed to go deeper. She interviewed will, many well-known healers, then took the plunge into Animal Mastery, Mastery Program at CWALU, Communication with All Life University, I like that, working directly with founder Joan Ranchett. She loved the school so much, she became a teacher for CWALU. Did I say your last name okay? Joan Ranchett. Ring quick. Okay, ranch. Ring, ring quick. Okay. Now she balances teaching with her business energy healing for people in paws, where she talks to and cares for human and animal clients all over the world, over Zoom or on the phone. My friend in San Francisco, I need to give him this info ASAP. <laughs> you can find out more on Charlie, and it's spelled C H A R L Y, and the last name is K A Y L E. So it's one word C H A R L Y K A Y L E dot com. And we'll have her below in the in this video. We'll have Victor add you on the on down below on that how they can get a hold of you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Thanks for oh, welcome, coming. Welcome. So tell us, how did your journey begin? How did you, had you always had like an insight? So I always, I mean, as a little kid being sent to bed, to go to bed at seven o'clock at night while it's still light out and you could hear other kids. I remember that one. Bed. Yeah, I'd lay in bed going, I don't want to be here. I don't want to, you know, be in bed. And, um, you know, I tried reading under the covers with a the flashlight. They caught me. I tried playing the radio under the covers. <laughs> They caught me. So all I had to do was, I'm not going to say play with myself. I'm going to say all I had to do was play with my <laughs> own energy. And so I would, I would lay in bed and, you know, I would create balls of energy. I would, you know, feel myself levitating. I called them balloon hands. That was my game. I was like, all right, let me do balloon hands because that relaxes me and maybe I can fall asleep. I don't think I was thinking that, you know, at whatever years old, oh, this relaxes me. I just knew it did. I would do balloon hands. So I was playing with energy as a very little kid. I thought everyone did. Like when you're bored, you just play with energy. You create it and build it and throw a ball. You know, now we call it a Reiki ball. Yeah, um, yeah. Back then I just, my little energy ball, my little, no, it was just my little ball. I didn't even know about energy. And yes, my animals, I was always um, just intuitively understanding them. I was very, very, very little. And my black cat Velvet had died. and it's like a couple days later, I told my parents, I saw Velvet last night. And my dad was like, no, you didn't, Velvet. And my mom's like, ah, 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 let her talk. And uh, I was like, no, Velvet was curled up at the foot of my bed against, I, I, I felt the pressure on my foot. So I could feel them, you know, back then too. I thought everyone did that. I thought everyone feels this stuff. It's nothing special. So Throughout the years, um, I built a radio career and and I, I did morning shows across the country. And that's what brought me to San Francisco. And on the side, I was taking classes of this and that and the other and all kinds of different things to build your energy and deep metaphysical classes because I was fascinated by that world. And animals would always pop in. And, you know, the universal two by four comes along <laughs> and says, hey, didn't you get all our little signals? There's another path you can go down while you're where you won't be stressing out and you'll be a lot happier. And, you know, you're always like, OK, whatever. I'm 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 comfortable in the pain I'm in. OK, it's pain. I know I'm I'm fine. Not full pain, but, you know, and then the universe goes whack and you're like, oh, my God, what do I do now? <laughs> it's plopped down in front of you. Hello. 
animals. You've been doing this your whole life. And, you know, it really took a lot of um, people, you know, coming along and saying that you have this talent. Why don't you grow it? I mean, James Van Prague, because I interviewed him on the radio for one of his books. And he was like, we got off the air and he said, I just want to tell you, you have a real talent for communicating with and healing animals. If you wow. ever decide to get out, you know, he said, I, you, you can do this. And well, I was like, com- oh. that was confirmation for you. If that's, you know, guess who didn't listen. <laughs> did you, did you walk away from your radio career to do this or were you doing the it radio- simultaneously? No, uh, finally. Radio when I parted ways, there were ethics involved. There were, and after, after I left radio, it, I, I was really freaking out thinking, how, how can I do this? But that's when I realized I could work with people too. And I had a great connection with helping people heal. But the thing was, I relied on the healing for the communication. I still didn't trust myself. And it wasn't until I took a deep, deep dive with my mentor, Joan Renquette at CWALU, um, that I realized I had the connection with the with the animals for the communication. And sometimes that's all that's needed for healing. What I learned from my mentor, Joan Renquette, is that animal communication is the foundation of healing. So that's when I did the deep dive and realized I had to really get the animal communication right, ethically, convincingly for me. I mean, you know, um, confidently strong. And so, and I've learned that sometimes all it takes is for an animal to be able to express him or herself. And then the healing can start. You could try all these other things and, and it may not take until they've actually been able to express themselves. And sometimes you're trying to treat the wrong area. You're yeah. trying to treat something physical that's emotional or behavioral or just a wrong part of the body. That's as, right. as you said, that's also with humans. Exactly. And exactly. I've learned that. It's the same, it's the same type of thing. Yeah. So you probably could see more working on an animal's condition versus maybe showing up more than a human. I know I had a roommate. Oh my God, she had this huge Dalmatian and it was an older dog and it had red, the whites were red. I mean, it was, ooh, it looked like it was like, ooh, but her owner would take her on hikes. She was a young gal and she used to go on these hikes and she came home, but she came back to the house because she was renting a room for me. And the hind quarter on this dog, I swear to God, was open about this big. It was open, okay? It hit some some kind of thorny thing that opened it up. Oh, God. You could see the dog was in pain. She cleaned it out. She didn't have money to go to a vet and have it suture. Well, I do, as you, I do healing work. So I just, like, okay. So I did the whole, and the dog was calm, always calm with me. It didn't, you know, and I put hands on it. And guess what? That thing closed up. It closed up and healed. She couldn't believe it. That's great. I couldn't believe it because I was working, so I wasn't even paying attention, you know, and, and that's proof positive. Oh, healing. Yes, absolutely works. I totally believe it. Mm-hmm. And that's wow. what's so great about communication underlying it. You can go to the right thing, the right area. The And like I said, sometimes just by being able to express themselves, that starts the healing right there. Yeah. You know, when I read deceased people, a lot of times it's their animals that come in first. Yeah. I don't call myself an an animal reader. I've even had horses come in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've talked to iguanas and bearded dragons and bunnies. Do you work on all types of species? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I... I don't push myself on them. I don't just see an animal in the wild and just automatically try and think what they're thinking because how would you like to be walking down the street and someone passes you and tries to invade your mind? Oh, hello, no, thank you. I don't know you. So I always, always ask an animal permission, no matter what I'm going to do. What do the ocean animals have to tell you, like a dolphin and that? What type of messages are they giving? There's a deep, deep, deep sadness for humanity. Because they can feel the what's happening in the ocean. And they're and you know, they have their physical issues too with the sonar and 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 drilling and things like that that mess up their habitat or or hurt them, you know, inside. 
their heads and their brains and their ears and um have they given you like any warnings like no i tell you better um wake up or else (laughs) (laughs) oh i think they've been saying that for decades yeah yeah true. yeah i don't i don't specifically go to you know to right right I, i i let them play and be and if someone wants to speak to me then they can call me and I'll talk to them you know and right. adopting they call out to me but I don't invade the pod and say hey hey what's going on but as a general consciousness there's deep sadness I'm gonna ask you I'm gonna ask you it's gonna be a crazy question <laughs> maybe okay so we have a big invasion of rabbits listen I love all creatures big and small but my thing is stay in your kind of environment <laughs> don't invade how do you talk to them to ask them to leave and go <laughs> to have hey, you're gonna need some patience but first you ground yourself which i know you already do you, yeah, you go. Yeah. and um this is just the really quick version because <laughs> but yes. you want to connect to their heart you know you want to ask their permission to talk to them right you know, right hey um can i talk to you for a second you beautiful creature this is what i do <laughs> go poop elsewhere <laughs> i've gotten i've gotten mice out of my house um so what oh, you've got you've got mice out. oh that's yeah. wonderful oh yeah in fact and i just had a new recent one my mom named him flash flash was very proud of his name and once we respected who he was and and how he had to live and then we asked him you know, repeatedly, I just explained that um, the house is a very dangerous place. Do not bring your family here. It, it's very dangerous. You could, Your life could end here and not because of anything I would do, but because, and I tried to like mentally show him different places in the house that you could get hurt here, cut here, killed here. You, you might get in this. This is a dangerous place for you to be. And it's not healthy you're not getting sun and water and the the crap you're getting into (laughs) the stuff you're eating it's so bad for you that can kill you and and I said so please for your sake and your family's sake stay outside I won't bother you in my backyard I won't mess with you at all you can live there and frolic and be free and you won't and so we had this conversation a lot and but once you connect, you connect with their heart and you realize who they are. I, I was like, oh, you're a little speed demon, aren't you, Flash? That's why mom named you Flash. Yeah. <laughs> was, and 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 I said, you're very smart. You're very smart to come in here and, and search for food, but you're not finding good food. I'm sorry, Flash. I eat crap. Yes, I know. You saw a bag of Doritos. Yes. I know I've got good food too, but the good food's in the refrigerator and you can't get to it. Yeah. So you're getting to the junkie how long stuff. Did, how long did that take you before um, he exited <laughs> your domain? Probably about a week. Wow. That's, oh, that's wow. pretty good. Those are hard to uh, get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's about respecting them and yeah. talking to them like they are sentient beings with a consciousness and intelligence and yes, you can say there are varying amounts of intelligence, but look at us, varying amount in us too. And it it's respecting, respecting their essence. You to me, animal communication is connecting to their true essence and finding out who they really are. Whether they've transitioned, you still connect to their true essence. It's they are not the malady that you know they are not what they died of they are not you know if you're dealing with a, a pet in hospice they they are not the condition they are they are the true essence of who they are and that is who they want to be remembered as and for and that's what i get constantly with animal i get a lot of people with sick animals dying animals or they've already transitioned and that's the overwhelming thing their animals show me themselves as younger plain um, or, you know, sharp and athletic, because that is how they want their parents to remember them. That is so important to them. And they're like, mommy, don't cry. I'm not cancer. I am this fun, athletic, um, adventurous being and creature who happened 
to get cancer. And now we're dealing with that. Have you found animals, when they cross over, do they come back as a different animal? Oh, they absolutely can. And do they come back kind of to the same family? It can be a family group. Who knows? They may skip a family and they may have a couple that they really like. <laughs> so they go back and forth. Yeah. But, you know, you've got your soul animal and they do tend to come back to the same person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I meet a lot of people and I've read thousands of people and I they always ask about their animals. Not that often do I get that a new animal they have is the old animal they used to have. Not that often, but occasionally I'll get it. Mm -hmm. That that is the same dog. Yeah, it. I mean, they often come back in another form. Could have been a bunny that hung out in the yard and, and just really liked their energy and decided, ooh, I want to come back in that family. What was surprising to me is when um, a couple of my pets crossed over and they came back. One came back as a moth and was giving me um, messages and that. And um, so that was pretty intriguing. Of course, all my friends thought, and these are people that love animals and that too. And they said, you know, you're whacked. I go, well, I know I'm whacked. Everybody knows I'm crazy, cray cray. But I know without a doubt, I know. They didn't. There were, signs, there were definite signs that it happened. So um, we all know that when it, you know, hits us in the gut, you know? Oh yeah, signals and signs to look for. I the grief holds it down and, and it's like such a thick fog. It's hard to see through, but if you can process through the grief, you see so many signs. My little guy, Brooklyn, who was a little Chihuahua Terrier, it, it, you know, just a little seven pound guy. It has transitioned and he is now my parking spot angel because yeah. in San Francisco, it's impossible to find a parking oh, spot. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to go somewhere. I tell him I would like a spot in front of or near this address, I need it free, as in it doesn't cost anything. I need it free, as in it's available. And I need to be able to see it when I'm coming up because he's gotten me spots and I didn't see them because I was focused on traffic. So I ask for all that. And darn, if he doesn't get me spots. Isn't that oh, something? My dog that I had when I sold my house, well, he was gone anyways because he went with my ex-husband. But this is a picture of him. His, I don't know if he could, his name is Raleigh, was Raleigh, oh. okay? So that was Raleigh. Now, the people that bought the house, actually it's Victor, our, our angel uh, production guy, him and his wife, this is their dog, Ziggy. It's like the same, when when I went to the house, I rang the doorbell and I hear, and this dog comes over and I started crying. I said, oh my God, Raleigh. <laughs> you're Ziggy <now. laughs> and the dog was all over me and I'm like holy moly the dog came back to the house I know animals sometimes when they get lost and I'm sure Linda you've heard this with people and and I know you have also Charlie where they'll be gone for a while and then miraculously they'll reappear and come back and they think they've been gone well my husband and I we were watching one night on Netflix um it was called The Engineer and what it was the movie was about um about Gaza again it was when Clinton was in office and he was trying to do the peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis and all of that and there was a bus I think in Israel and it blew up they they blew up the bus and there were um people from the U.S. you know a lot of different people on but there were people from the U.S. that were on it and it re my husband recalled he said oh my god he said when he had an apartment in this town in New Haven he said he he just moved in. He said all of a sudden this dog appears. This kind of shabby old dog appeared on his doorstep. <laughs> he was barking. Opened up the door. The dog walks in, lays down, and goes to sleep, and doesn't move. And he's uh -huh. like, "Oh my god!" He checks. It had a collar and it had a little disc on it. He calls up the owners. Right? They go, "Oh my god! The dog's been missing for two weeks. The dog was away. It was a twenty mile distance." The wow. dog walked 20 miles, came to this apartment, to this apartment, whatever, a house that had an apartment. The people said, the owner said, and I'm getting chills on it, I want to cry. It, this was such a profound thing. It was a Jewish family. Their daughter had lived in that apartment. The, it was their dog. They, the dog was only over there one time. By a, a car. Didn't walk, what? came by car. Her daughter went to live in Israel in a kibbutz, and she was blown up on that bus. Oh, my God. 
Wow. I think, think, I don't think it's so much the dog. I think it was her energy that came in the dog and came came back to check out, check out where where she used to live. And the people, it blew their, they were blown away. They couldn't believe it. Is that amazing? That's amazing. And do you find Charlie like our our pets? And when we're going through something traumatic, well, it could be anything emotional, but it could be a physical illness that they they know. Oh, absolutely. They have. They're so smart. Dogs' noses, like when they sniff each other's rear ends, they're doing a little, you know, medical read, and they can tell you everything that's wrong with that dog. Where, you know, whereas we take them to the vet and the vet still can't find it. Um, They're brilliant. And, and cats, yes, cats are so intuitive and so amazing. And, you know, a cat will just automatically lay on something that hurts, a part of your body that's sore or that hurts. Uh And their purr is of a frequency. It's a healing frequency. The tone. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. They have this amazing healing frequency that can there's this old veterinary saying something about if you have a broken bone go in a room with a purring cat and it's like a veterinary saying from 100 years ago really i never heard that well that's pretty interesting yeah well well, yeah everybody that's hurting go get cats and put them on yourself it's kind of like years ago they used to what's that but love them. Don't just oh, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. Years ago they used to use leeches to bleed. <laughs> oh, you get a cat. Right, right. Oh my God. But, what do you um, want? Pet leeches or pet cat? <laughs> do birds have unique personalities too? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Oh my god. I used to I used to have parakeets and I loved them, but I yeah. give plenty of food for the birds out there. They come all caught types, even crows come. And they don't bother the little birds, believe it or not. And I always keep the honey, the my hummingbirds feeders full. Yeah. And this is where it's happening. You know what I'm saying? They love it okay. here. Yeah. So nice. Yes. I've, con- I've conversed with quite a few parrots. And it's so funny because I had this one parrot telling me that there were issues going on in the relationship between the dad owned the parrot and that there were some issues going on, control issues going on with the relationship between the dad and his new girlfriend. <laughs> I did not tell the dad that. <laughs> wow. Now, do, you, do you feel that some of our um, pets will take on, say, will take on our illness to take it, kind of eradicate it from us? And then- I know animals are not here just to serve us and, and make us better. I, they are here on their own journey. And then we have our own contracts with them. But I think at times there are animals who do and can. And of course, that's the last thing we want. We don't want an animal taking on. So, oh, no, we wouldn't want, um, no, I'm not saying that we would, no. again, yeah. we wouldn't buy a pet to say, okay, no, yeah, no, no, no. lay on us and purr and take this away. <laughs> no, I knew that's not what you meant. Oh, my God. But I, <laughs> but I've heard this so many times that, um, yeah, that somebody has gone through, you know, say, right. you know, like a cancer or something and that their, their pet developed it also. And yeah. uh, I just thought that, wow, that's pretty yeah, amazing that I that would it, happen. I think it can happen. It, yeah, it, it, we of course I know the person doesn't want that for sure. Right. So let's wrap up here. Is there because this the station's about you know this channel's about balance, living in ba- the best balance that we could be because the world is so chaotic and it's up and down all the time. Is there a message you could give us with with our animals as far as balance there? That yeah, just be balanced within yourself first. And then you help balance the entire household. You want the whole morphic revenue. You want everything to be in balance in the household with you setting the example. You're the emotional leader. You ground and balance yourself. And then you are in a better position to to handle anything that comes up, to be in control. And I'm not talking alpha. I'm just talking to be in control because it's your household. You want to be in control of it. And to connect with your heart, always first connect with your heart and and then you they'll feel the the love and the balance. I mean, and and the calmness and and the hey, it's okay, Fluffy. I've got this. So Fluffy isn't worried. Fluffy yeah. isn't on edge and on anxious. That's Fluffy's true. like 
Yeah, they pick up uh, all the things like our children pick up and that. So it's a basic tenant. It's a simple kind of thing for life to be in that place and that, like you said, the calm and in the heart. And, you know, they even say whoever cooks the meals at night or prepares your food, that it comes from a place of love and that they're healthy. You know, if, you know, if they're not, that's, you're getting that energy. Absolutely. Yeah. All that energy goes into the food. Right. All that energy goes into the food. So you want to feed them with love and pick up their poop with love. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Animal lovers, actually, that's one yeah. form of checking that they're healthy or not. You know, um, yeah. I do that with my clients too. You do. But pick up their poop. Um, oh. If I'm house sitting, not if, <laughs> yeah, I don't go over to their house just that. So we're going to post how they can contact you. If I'm house sitting. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yes, please. Yes, we're going to add you. Thank you so much for uh, Charlie for taking the time to be with us today. We really thank you, Charlie. It. I, hey, want, you. I want the viewers to know that right behind you, that scene behind Charlie, because she's house sitting and that whole area is for cats, the cats and the pets. It's all fenced. That is so amazing. I never saw anything like that. It's all fenced in for them. Okay, come back, honey. We went off. Yes, it's a catio. It's There's a, a catio. waterfall. All of this. Is... That's amazing. <laughs> People will be calling you to all find there. out about it. That I'll is two seconds. I know. It's incredible. Perfect for the animals. That is something to see. I never, ever saw anything like that. Look at that with the stairs. Yeah. That's just awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's amazing. They have their own little pool. The 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 koi fish do. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Do the cats go the cat in? Do the cats no, go in? Not allowed. Oh my lord. <laughs> they're not allowed to go in and, and grab the koi fish. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no. Okay. I would imagine. That's, <laughs> yeah. So again, honey, thank you for being here with us. We'll put uh, Charlie's information down below. Um, as always, thank you for spending time with us. For everybody, please subscribe. Thank you for, for watching, listening, and sharing with us. And uh, remember, it's all about, Linda, all about- Be the change you want to see. Wanna see and from our hearts to yours, always in total love, joy, peace, balance. If you have inner peace, you, you have it all. Always you got it all. Heart. Love everyone. Thank this you. Fun. Thank you. Take care.